Yo, what's up guys? It's your favorite mums here and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today basically uh, I want to do a bit of a different video, something that we haven't done before. I get a lot of questions uh, in my DMs and stuff like that off of stream about, you know, what do I think of this card? Uh, any new cards that come out, you know, what do I think of the card? Um, what chem style would I put on them? And then obviously I always get asked for investments and stuff like that because we also like to trade and do some investing. So I want to make a video where I basically just go and talk about the Bundesliga tot. So the new card that's just come out, the new cards that have just come out, the general tots, you know, investments you could make uh, on those tots cards, when to buy them, when's the best time to buy them, when's the best time to sell them, as well as just have a look at some of the best cards and maybe if I would use them or not and what kind of chem styles you could put on them. So before we get into it, I thought I'd show you guys the team. This is the team we're going into weekend league with. As I've said before, I'm changing the team up every single week. So every single week we're going to try and integrate brand new cards that we've packed uh, from that team of the week. So I did Ansu Fatty from a SBC. We packed Benzema, De Jong and Carvajal during our massive pack openings that we do. Um, I also packed, I got to Stegen from Red, but last night from my 81 plus player pick, I also got packed a blue to Stegen. So um, I don't think I'm going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to use him or not. We might try him out instead of De Gea. Uh, we'll have to have a look. But yeah, so that's the team I'm going to go into weekend league with. Um, obviously, next weekend league, after this one, we'll try out Bundesliga players. Hopefully, we pack a bunch of Bundesliga players and we can go and try those out. So yeah, I thought I'd quickly show you that. But uh, other than that, let's get straight into it. Uh, I also wanted to mention that I have already done him. Actually, the best way to quickly show you is here. I have already done him. But if you guys are looking at this SBC Witzel, I would say do him. It's so cheap. An 84 rated squad and an 85 rated squad for a CDM that's six foot one, medium highs, four star, four star, which is insane for a CDM. Or I mean a box to box if you want to use him for that. I mean, great strength, great stamina, great jumping for his height, insane defense, uh, really good dribbling, apart from obviously his balance, which isn't the greatest, but it's not horrible. Really good short pass, long pass, and even like for a CDM, or even a box-to-box. -box. Really good finishing as well. Um, I think the weak point on this card is maybe his acceleration and his balance. And even maybe, you know, his agility could be a bit faster. So, I mean, what do you put on this card? I think it depends on where you use him. But I'm honestly leaning towards maybe even an engine. If you use him as a box-to-box, -box, I think you throw an engine on him. Right? That ups his acceleration, gets his sprint speed up, gives him plus 10 balance, ups his agility... And then ups his shooting stats as well a little bit. So I think an engine's a really good chem style if you're going to use him as a box-to-box. -box. If you're going to use him as like a pure CDM, I mean, you could just throw like an anchor on him or a shadow on him, right? Just make him insane defensively and then just get that pace up and not really worry about the balance. Because 74 balance isn't the greatest, but I mean, if you're using him as a pure holding DM, it's not horrible. Like there's a lot worse defender CDMs that have a lot worse balance. There's a lot, sorry, there's a lot of good defenders, CDMs, that have worse balance. But yeah, just the fact that it's 84, 85 rated squad, this card, I mean, I got him done with just what's in my club from doing the League SBC grind. But I mean, even if you bought the cards, you could probably get him done for like 100k. Um, even his traits, solid player leadership, so good traits as well for a, uh, a CDM or a box-to-box -box mid. So yeah, that's first of all, I would actually probably go get that card done. Um... Now I want to talk to you guys about having a look at the Bundesliga. And we're just going to go through. So we're going to have a quick look on Footbin. That's probably the best way to go. And we're just going to have a look at some of the best cards. Now, some of the cards I want to look at, we'll look at Sancho, Hullen, Lewandowski, Royce. Uh, have a look at this. Kimmich, Werner, obviously, Havertz. We'll basically look at the starting team, um, as well as we'll have a look at a couple of the really meta guys on the bench. So probably these ones. The rest of the guys, not really too fussed about. They're probably the main ones. And I don't want to spend too much time because I don't want to bore people. But let's, so we'll go through it really, really quickly and just have a look at each card. Then I'll get into investments. And I'll show you guys some graphs of how the other cards moved and some really good money makers you, could, you guys can make on this team of the week with pretty much no risk. So this is the first card. And this is actually a card I really, really want for my team. I plan on getting this card. Um, I hope I pack him, obviously. If not, we might have to buy him for the next weekend league. 
Five star skills, four star weak foot. I mean, that's great. Medium lows, honestly, it's not the greatest work rate, but it's not horrible. Um, he's got that lean body type, which I like, especially if... Sorry, guys, should have turned that off. Uh, he's got that lean body type, which... I personally like um, it makes their it just makes them a better dribbler. It makes them be out. You can turn a lot easier with them. Quick turning, really fast dribbling in tight areas. The lean body type helps with that. So, I mean, insane pace, ninety nine acceleration, ninety six sprint speed. Um, long shots isn't that great, but honestly, unless you sh like long shots, don't really matter unless you're shooting from like way outside the box. Often, if you're shooting just outside the box, that actually normally counts towards finishing. So really long shots isn't that an important stat. And then he's got 99 finishing, 99 positioning, 86 shot power, which is great. 99 vision, 95 crossing, 99 short passing, 98 curve, insane. Composure's only 87, but apart from that, really good dribbling stats and then insane stamina. Um, yeah, I personally, I love this card. And you could use him just about anywhere. I mean, if you want to use him as a striker, you could use him as a striker. I mean, personally, I'd probably go, depending on your formation, if you're going like a 4-2-3-1, which a lot of people play, I mean, play him as a central cam with that short passing, that vision. Play him as a right cam with that crossing. I mean, he's probably greatest as like a right cam or something like that, right? With that, um, or even a left cam with that pace, that positioning, that vision, that crossing, that dribbling, he would be insane. And that stamina as well for a, for a winger would be great. What do you put on him? I guess it kind of depends on where you're going to play him. Um, I mean, you don't really need to touch his pace. I'll be honest with you. You don't really need to touch it. He's got 99 agility, 99 acceleration, 96 sprint speed. I don't think you need to touch that. I guess if you want to play him as a striker, you probably want to improve his, fin uh, his shooting a little bit. You could even work on, I guess, his strength if you really wanted to. So you've got things like a marksman. A marksman gives him that plus five shot power, that plus 10 long shots. Um, Gives him that plus 10 jumping, that extra strength. So it just gives him that little bit of strength. And then also ups that reactions and ball control. So a marksman's probably a good shout. Um, let's have a look at what other people have put on him. Finisher, maestro, marksman. So yeah, it's kind of what I was thinking depending on when you play him. Once again, finisher also gives him that extra strength there. Gives him the, the 99 shot power, 94 long shots. So definitely a good one. Otherwise, it looks like a maestro is also the other option, which once again, gives him that long shots, gives him that shot power boost, reactions and ball control. I think personally, I would probably go for... I mean, it's marksman or finisher, right? I think it depends where you use him, but I'd be looking at finisher probably. I'd probably be looking at finisher. I mean, if you use him as a winger... You could maybe uh, make the argument for the marksman just because you get that extra like ball control reactions. If you're using him as a striker or anything like that, I think you definitely have to go with a finisher. Um, yeah, insane card. Insane. So I would definitely want that card. Um, quick note as well. Don't be buying any of these cards today. You're waiting. I'll explain that afterwards, but you're definitely waiting on all these cards. I would not be buying any of them today. Um, this card... Three-star skills, four-star weak foot. So they did up his weak foot to a four-star weak foot, which is cool. The fact he's only got three-star skills, though, does let him down. But I mean, I guess you don't expect to be massively skilling with a guy of six foot four, right? So high medium work rates are great. Um, body type is high and average. So even though he's got pretty good dribbling stats, I mean, his balance is a little bit lower as agility. Just because of his body type, and the fact he's tall, he probably will feel a little bit clunky. I'm going to be honest with you. So this guy doesn't 100% fit the meta. Um, insane shooting, really good pace. Like I said, agility not the greatest. Good dribbling apart from that balance and agility. I mean, for a striker, good vision, good balance. Uh, short passing, sorry, good curve. Really good strength, good stamina, good jumping. So, I mean, he's going to win stuff on the head. Heading's not that meta though. Um, I do like this guy. But I wouldn't want to use two of his type. So, for instance, if you have him and, like, Werner together, I don't think those two are, like, a really good pairing. If you have him and you pair him with, a um, like, someone really, really fast or someone, like, with that agile body, I think they could work well together. Or if you play, like, a 4-1-2-1-2, a guy like this could be really good. Use him as a target man, maybe. You know, hold up with that strength and stuff like that. You know, get it to him, 
hold up play a little bit, and then use your fast cam, your cam and your two left and right cam coming through, making runs on the through, dishing off those balls. I think he could be really effective there. But if you like playing, you know, really in tight dribbling, um, get in behind kind of stuff, he might not be the greatest just because of that balance, that agility, and um, the fact, you know, his body type and his height could be a little bit clunky. In saying that though, if you do want to put a chem style on him, what are you going to put on him? I mean, really, you want to work on that balance and agility. So that's what you're looking at getting up the most. So yeah, that's what I was about to say. It looks like most people are using engine. I was about to say the same thing just because of that balance. You throw an engine on him, gives him plus five agility, takes it to 91, plus 10 balance. So acceleration is now 99, sprint speed is 99, agility is 91, balance is 94. You know, also gets that vision up, that um, vision up and stuff like that. That's probably the chem style used for him. I think it's an ins he's an insane card. Once again, it just depends on how you play. And I think if you use him right, he's going to be great. If you pair him with like a Werner, I mean, look, they're still going to be good. Or if you pair him with like a Suarez, they're still, I mean, they're still going to be good. But you may find they clash a little bit with their play styles. Um, this card's insane. I wish he was just higher than four star, four star. I mean, average body type, high mediums, good work rate. Six foot is like just a solid height. Four star, four star is good. That's like my minimum for a striker. I like to have four, uh, a striker or an attacking player. Four star, four star minimum for me. Um, obviously, if he could have had like that five star weak foot or something, just would have made him lights out in my opinion. But either way, man, I mean, he's three million coins and you can understand why. You know, there, there's no weak spot on this player. Obviously, you're going to use him as a striker. He's got 98 vision, 99 short passing, 98 curve, 99 free kicks. His shooting is all in the high 90s. You know, his pace is in the mid 90s. His dribbling, apart from his agility, is all in the high uh, 90s pretty much. And his strength is like, you know, jumping all in the high 90s, mid to high 90s. Um, what do you put on him? I mean, I guess I'm going to say like an engine again, because you probably don't need to touch his shooting. You probably just want to, I mean, get his pace up to 99s and then get that agility up a little bit, right? So an engine gets him to 99 balance, 99 dribbling, 94 agility, got also get him to 99 and 99 for his pace. Let's see what other people, yeah. And that's what it looks like the mass amount of the community is doing as well. And I mean, look, that makes him a 98.7 striker. Just, yeah, lights out, man. If only he had, you know, five-star, five-star, or at least a five-star weak foot, I would, I would just be in love. But um, if you pack this card, count yourself one lucky person. That's all I can say. And I, hopefully we're going to pack him today on my road to glory. Uh, we've got a lot of packs to open. Next card, Royce. Um, El Capitano. Good body type, 5'11", lean. So he's going to be that, like, you know, good dribbling as well. He's going to be... Really agile on the ball, you would think. Four star, four star, solid. Um, good stamina. Solid strength as well for a, for like a small, lean body type player. Passing's insane. Shooting's insane. Pace is insane. Um, I just reckon like, personally, I, you know, obviously you could use this card just about anywhere. I mean, I would use this card probably as a central cam. You could use him as a left or right cam, but if you're playing a 4-2-3-1, a 4-1-2-1-2, throw him at central cam with that... 96 vision, 96 short passing, that curve, the shooting, the dribbling. He's just going to be lights out. Once again, man, I mean, I feel like we're saying this a lot, but it just feels like this is what these cars need, an engine. It's an engine. And let's have a look if people agree. Yeah, the community looks like they agree. I mean, you throw an engine on him, 99s for pace, pretty much 99s across the board for passing, and then pretty much 99s across the board for dribbling. I mean, he basically becomes one of the best cams in the game. And even on here, he becomes a 97.7 cam. Comes one of the best cams in the game. So yeah, that's where I would definitely be playing him at central cam if I could. But I mean, left cam, right cam as well would work. And obviously, if you wanted to, striker. If you played him at striker, maybe then instead of an engine, you could go a hawk just to get finish off that, that shooting, give him a little bit more strength. But I'd rather the engine and uh, as a cam, probably, I'd say. Uh, this card, man. Honestly, I think this card's cheap. I was kind of shocked at how cheap this card was, man. I mean, I assume it's because of Vitzel, right? 
The fact that we've got a really, really cheap Vitzel and SBCs is why this card is so cheap. But I mean, he's 467 now. When during buy time, this card will be 350 probably. I mean, 350k for a 96 CDM with like good acceleration, pretty like okay sprint speed for a CDM, insane dribbling for a CDM, insane finishing and shooting for a CDM. I mean, you could use him as a box box. You don't even have to use him as a CDM. Four star weak foot, uh, really good defending, really good stamina, insane stamina. I mean, insane passing. The only thing you might wish on this card, I mean, he's only five foot nine, so I guess maybe a bit more height and a bit more strength. Um, but I guess like he's one of those guys where you play him as your ball playing CDM. So I know a lot of people play four two three one. That's why I refer to that a bit. Um, you know, you play him as like I like to have uh, different CDMs. You have one ball playing CDM that maybe gets up the ground a little bit, um, is a bit of an outlet player. And then you have one holding DM, which is just like your rock. You know, you put him as your like ball playing CDM and you pair him with like, you know, a Vieira or something like that. Or just, you know, obviously other, lots of other types, but someone like that who's maybe got the bit more height, got the strength. Um, and then you play him as a, your like ball playing DM dude as a pair. Lights out, dudes. Lights out, man. What I'd put on uh, high lows as well, really good for a, for a CDM, obviously. Oh, sorry, high lows. It's a high attacking scale, not the greatest for a CDM actually. But uh, once again, if you're playing, that's why you play him with somebody who is more of a holding DM, and you play him as a ball playing because of his high lows. You probably don't want to play him as like a standalone DM, or you don't want to play him with another DM who whose job is to get up the ground a little bit and also be an outlet player, unless you play like a very attacking play style. Um, what you would throw in this card, once again, depends on where you play him, man. I'm actually just thinking though, you throw like an anchor on him, to be honest with you. You probably don't need to touch, you mean, you don't need to touch his shooting. You don't need to touch his passing. You don't need to touch his dribbling. So you probably want to work on that defensive awareness, that sprint speed. And then if you can, that strength as well. So I think pretty much an anchor does that. Oh, whoopsies. Sorry guys. Uh, an anchor does that, right? You throw an anchor on him, goes to 79 strength, 99 aggression, 99 uh, jumping. His heading accuracy goes to 94, 96 interceptions, 98 defensive awareness, 99 stand, 99 slide. And then you've got 87 sprint speed, 98 acceleration, which is perfectly fine for a, a CDM or a box to box. If you are a bit of a pace whore, then just go a shadow. 92 sprint speed, you know, 98 defensive awareness. And, you know, and that's if you don't worry about the strength. So I guess it depends on, once again, how you play him. Um, I would either go an anchor or shadow, definitely. For me, I would probably go an anchor. I, I think I'd want a little bit more strength on him and stuff like that. And it pretty much does the same in terms of... And it gives him higher jumping because of his height, make up for that height a bit. It gives him pretty much the same defensive. It's just five less sprint speed. That's the only difference. What's everyone else putting on him? Yeah, it looks like anchor and then shadow. So... Pretty uh pretty easy one, but I think that's a good card, man. For like I said, this card could easily be 350k when it's buy time. I think that's a pretty good price. Pair him with with you know have a Bundesliga team pair him with that Witzel. You've got two DMs that you probably got for under 500k between the two of them. Uh, Werner, once again, four star, three star. That three star skills lets him down a little bit. Um, 88 balance, 86 composure as well isn't the greatest. It's still a good card though. I mean, you don't need to touch his pace. You don't really need to touch his shooting because long shots I don't think are a big issue. You probably want to work on his balance a little bit. And I mean, even if he could get some strength, that would be good. What's everyone putting on him? An artist and then a shadow. So a shadow is just stupid. I don't know why people are putting a shadow on him. An artist actually probably looks like a good idea. An artist doesn't look like a horrible idea, man. It gives him... Because his vision's really bad. And I know with a striker, some people are like, oh, well, vision doesn't matter that much. But it actually does a little bit. Because, I mean, if you actually have a look at your striker stats, half the time, even if you're playing a 4 2 3 one with the lone striker, your striker probably gets more assists than anybody else in the team. Because they're playing balls off to your left mid, your left cam, your right cam, your central cam. You know, if you're playing a 4 one 2 one 2 with two or a two attacking formation, they play balls off to each other. So... Vision actually is pretty important, even for a striker. So, gives him that really gets his vision right up, gets his long passing right up as well. 
bit more curve, which I like that curve. And then also is able to give him, um, you know, more agility, gets his balance up, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, because you don't need to touch his shooting, I don't think you don't need to touch his pace um, or his stamina. So yeah, I think that's probably a good shout and that's probably what I'd be using on this card. Uh, last few guys, I'll go through these ones really quickly because these aren't, this is where the team starts getting let down a little bit. Medium, medium's not the greatest work rates for a cam. Four star, four star's okay. I guess what lacks on this card is his agility, his balance, and his acceleration. So you definitely want to work on his acceleration, his agility, his balance, straight up engine. Engine for me, you, you're going to play this guy as a cam probably. You throw an engine on him, boom. 90 crossing, 99 vision, 99 long passing. Gets his acceleration up to 91, gives him 92 balance, 93 agility, and then also gets his reactions up to 97, ball control dribbling to 99. So that's 100% what I'd put on him, and you're playing this guy at cam. Like it says there, it becomes a 97.8 cam um, with four star, four star. Once you put the chem sign on him, it's actually a pretty insane card. It's just that medium, medium work rates, which in my opinion aren't the best. And the fact is six foot two, I personally like a more agile cam. Six foot two can be a little bit, um, like I said, the body type can affect sometimes how they dribble and how they feel in game. Even though his dribbling's in stain, the fact he's got a high body type with six foot two can make them feel a little bit clunky, even with insane dribbling. Kostic, this guy just for me is a no, so I'm not even going to go through it. High highs is good. Three star, three star already for an attacking player is just a no no for me. So straight up, even though his stats are pretty good. The fact he's got three star, three star for me is a no-no. If that doesn't bother you, then it's a pretty good card as a winger. High highs are good, like good dribbling, pace, shooting, um, physical, passing. It's a good card if the three star, three star doesn't mind you. For me, straight up no. Uh, Mueller is pretty much in the same boat. I mean, high highs are all right if you're playing as like a box to box, uh, which he can play because he's got the standing tackle, he's got the interceptions. Three-star skills, not my favorite. Um, but everything else isn't too bad, man. Like I said, I'd probably play this guy as a box-to-box. -box. People are throwing an engine on him. And yeah, that's what I would agree with. Throw that engine on him, gets the pace up, gets that balance and agility up, gets that passing up. You throw him in as a box-to-box. -box. A ball-playing box-to-box, I'd probably throw him in as. I mean, you could go cam as well, but three-star skills on a cam, I'm not a big fan of. But yeah, box-to-box. In like a four one two one two or something like that, I think I think could be a, a good shout if you are going to use that card. Hummels, uh, I don't like this card. Balance is like obviously balance isn't horrible and agility is not horrible for a CDM, but it's not great. 71, 78, and sixty eight acceleration, uh, and only eighty one sprint speed on a centre back in the game right now. I'd rather go get Boateng. You know what I mean? Good strength and good defensive, but for me, I personally just wouldn't use this card. There's better center backs in the game. Uh, there's better Bundesliga center backs. Go get Boateng. Or personally, I would go away from a, a, a Bundesliga CD, uh, center backs. I would go, I would rather go like a La Liga defense and get yourself like a Ramos, a Diego Carlos, a Militao, who is right now in SBC, something like that, man, and do a hybrid. So I would just personally stay away probably from the center backs in there. But if you had to, um, I'd rather go Boateng. This card's extinct right now at 550k. He will, I think, I don't think EA will up his price range. Uh, he'll become extinct. He'll un, he won't be extinct anymore, I reckon, as of like tomorrow. But I mean, this is a pretty insane uh, left back, to be honest with you, man. The high highs are cool, especially if you play like a, an attacking style with your wing backs. Four star, four star on a, on a wing back as well is great. I mean, really good dribbling, um, insane pace. Like, obviously, great stamina. Good strength, man, for someone who's got, like, the speed and stuff like that. Normally, if you've got good dribbling, all that kind of stuff, the strength can be a little bit off. So, good strength. Really good crossing and vision. Um, his interceptions and stuff do let him down a little bit. So, you probably want to fix that a little bit. I'm going to say, like, you throw probably, like, a guardian or something on him, right? I don't, you don't need to touch his pace. So, I think an anchor or a shadow would obviously be a waste. You throw, like, a guardian on him. I mean, 89 composure, 97 ball control, 96 dribbling, and then gets that defensive awareness up to 99, that interceptions up to 92, standing tackle up to 99. I think that's probably the go. Sentinel as well. What are people putting on a Sentinel? Let's have a look at this. 
A Sentinel's good as well. I guess it depends on how you play him again. If you play him as like a defensive center back, like stay back while attacking, sorry, as a defensive wing back, you're probably going to throw a Sentinel. Get that strength up, get that dribbling up, leave the, the dribbling, right? Get the defending and physicals up. If you play him as like an attacking player who gets up the ground, then I think the Guardian. Because then you don't, I mean, the strength is already pretty good. You don't really need more strength if you're playing him as like an attacking player. I think I'd rather that extra ball control and dribbling and composure on him. Um, so yeah, so I, that's what I'd be doing depending on how you play him. But that's actually a good card. Uh, last couple, man. Two star, uh, three star, weak foot. Medium, mediums, not very good work rates. Um, pace is really, really good on this card. Defensive awareness, not the best. Uh, agility, not the best. Dribbling, not the best. It's not a horrible card. Once again, if you're going Bundesliga, I would rather use him probably than Hummels. So for me, I would probably go, if you're going like Bundesliga defense right now, probably him and like a Boateng from SBCs are probably your, your go. Um, so if you are going Bundesliga, I think it's a good card. And this is one of the center backs I'd probably buy. But once again, I think you're better off just going like Militao from the SBCs, who you could probably get for 500k, and he's probably one of the best centre backs in the game, as well as you know Varane, Ramos. This 93 Ramos is insane at centre back that I've been using. Um, like I said, Varane, Diego Carlos. There's just better centre backs in the game. Although good card, just that work rates let you down a little bit. Nabry, four star, four stars, good. High mediums, good. Uh, pace good, finishing, shooting's really good. Honestly, strength stamina's good, passing's good, dribbling's good. It's just a good card. What you know, it's a good winger. What are you throwing on him? Looks like a lot of people throwing marksman on him. Yeah, and I probably agree with that, man. Once again, depending on where you're using him, um, you could go a sniper. Basically, makes his dribbling like. High 90s apart from composure. Pace is already insane. And then makes him shooting pretty much like all in the 90s. Uh, or if you want to, you go on marksman if you want to give him a little bit more strength as well on top of that. Um, either or, honestly, you're going to do the job. Throw him in as, I mean, you could use him a lot of different places, man. He's pretty, he looks like a pretty versatile card, right? I think if you wanted to, you could throw this card at striker if you really wanted to. Because he has got the strength. He's got the dribbling. He's got the shooting. But I mean, yeah, wing probably. If, you, if you're going like a 4 2 3 one, I'd probably throw him on the, uh, as a cam, like a left cam or something like that on the wing. Cutting in, man, with that pace, that acceleration, that agility. Good crossing stats and vision as well. Yeah, very nice card. And last one is Hakimi. Um, it's a solid card, but it's not insane. If you're going a right back in the Bundesliga, I mean, he probably is, I guess, your go-to now. I know there's a few other cards, um, like Mbabu and stuff like that, who have been really good right backs. But I mean, you're probably going to go this card, man. This card, throw a Sentinel on him, as a lot of people are saying, because you don't need to touch that pace, really. What are we looking at? Yeah, there you go. I mean, 96 defensive, 99 stands, 93 interceptions, with 94 strength, um, 99 sprint speed, 96 acceleration, like solid dribbling, 93 crossing, 97 short pass. Throw a Sentinel on him, play him at right back. Your only issue is he's high lows, so you are going to have a problem probably with him getting up the ground a bit. So once again, if you play a defensive style of football, maybe he's not the best guy for you. Otherwise, really good card. So yeah, that's it for going through the cards, man. I know that was a little bit, I went on a little bit there, um, but I just wanted to give you guys all the information. I do get asked questions a lot about off of stream and in my DMs about, you know, chem styles, what I think of players. So... Hopefully that gives you a good idea. And I mean, if somebody wants to put in the comments, like what minute I actually talk about each player. So then people can just look at the comments and, you know, think, oh, I want to know about, you know, I want to know about um, Witzel or I want to know about Kimmich only. They can just skip to that minute and have a look at those card, that card. That might be a good idea, man. So I'm happy for people to do that if they want to. Um, last but not least is investments. So to talk about investments, I want to quickly show you guys, this will only take two minutes how some of these cards moved last week, how some of these cards moved, right? Now, these were really good investments. I'm going to show you how they all moved and when to buy these cards. So basically, investing in all these cards, legitimately all of them, 
is easy money makers. Um, and the day you wanna do it is on a Tuesday, okay? And I'm gonna explain why in a second. First, I'm gonna show you just with a few examples. So these are some of the ones I told people to invest in last week. Carvajal was one of my favorite ones. I told people to invest in him um, last Tuesday. And look at this. On Tuesday, he was Monday, Tuesday. So this is actually an average. So it, it, it shows you, it looks like it's Monday. That's the lowest. It actually wasn't. It's more, I mean, it depends where you're from. If you're in the UK, it's like Monday night. Late Monday night is like a good time. If you're in Australia, where I'm from, it's like Tuesday morning. So it kind of does depend on where you're from, I guess. Um, but you could have picked this card up for 260. So I bought Carver Howe for 260K. All uh, right, 330 on Friday, right now he's 355. So I bought him for 260, he's 355 right now. That's 95K rise, that is per card. You're only getting taxed about 15 to 18K a card. So you're looking at um, about 75 to 80K profit per card. I mean, you put, I don't know how much money you have, obviously this is for a bit more money makers. If you've got only, what, if you've got, 3 million coins, you could have bought 10 of that card and you could have made yourself nearly a million coins profit off of 3 million. That's an insane a return on investment, insane. Same with like someone like Varan. Uh, 117 he's at right now. On Monday, Tuesday, he was sitting at 1438. It says here, you could have actually gone to him lower if you got the right time, the time I'm telling you guys to buy, you could have gone in for closer to like 1410. Right now is, oh wow, he's dropped. That part looked bad, chat. That looked bad, guys. Okay, that's actually interesting, man. I guess, oh, sorry, no, sorry, dude. We got Militao. Okay, my bad, ignore that. It's because we got Militao. So we got a SBC center back. So rather than have it using this Varan or people sold their Varan to go to Militao instead. So that, that, that's why that explains that. So that is, I guess, a bit of a warning. If you go and invest in, for instance, a center back on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, we get another center back in that league that's better. I mean, that's going to cause people to go and sell their one and go buy, do the SBC card. So that is like the slight risk but very unlikely, obviously. So Sergio Ramos probably went down as well for that exact same reason. Um, so they're probably bad ones to have a look at, to be honest with you. So let's instead look at like Benzema. Because the other ones that weren't center backs would have all been good. So Benzema on Monday was 8.57. You could have actually got that card for about 8.35. Right now he's 9.95. So that card's gone up 160K. From Tuesday, from Monday night, Tuesday, till Saturday. 160K, man. So you're looking at about 110K profit a card, 115K profit a card. So there's an, a sh a, a showing you those ones. Have a look at the Prem ones now. Let's look at Allison if you want to go cheap. Allison, here, on the Tuesday, was 156. You could have actually gotten him for about 140. On the Friday, 160. So you could have made about 15K profit, 10 to 15K profit a card on that one. Robertson, Tuesday, he was 299. Once again, I actually bought a Robertson for 280. That's when he was like, because these are average prices, by the way, chat. So they're not their lowest point. And this isn't actually the highest point. That's an average price. Again, he actually went higher. So I got him for 280. You could have sold him for 350. Uh, but he actually went up to about, he was selling for about 360, 365 for a while. Um, which if you, if you bought and sold at the right time, that's about 85 K margin on that card. And all the cards kind of move like that. A lot of them move like that. And most of them. So basically the best time to buy is normally Monday night, Tuesday, Monday after 6 PM UK. The reason for that is with weekend league sell off, it gives the cards time to get into packs, right? So it gives you Saturday, Sunday, for lightning rounds and it makes these cards hop into packs. So there's a lot of them in packs now. Monday, you've got weekend league sell-off. So you've got people selling the cards because of weekend league sell-off and they want to open packs. So that makes them go down really low on a Monday. Now, a lot of people would normally say Monday's the lowest, which is normally correct. But every Monday night, 
we get upgrade packs. Last on the Premier League, we got the 80, we got the four um, rare Premier League cards. On the La Liga, we got the, the two 82 plus La Liga cards. Now, when you get those cards, man, the people pack them so much, man. Like I packed like six or seven La Liga tots from those 82 plus packs because they're just meta as hell. So people pack them, they go down further and then they start rising. So if you wait till 6 p.m. UK and maybe wait a few hours after 6 p.m. UK on Monday, that's when they normally hit a low. Give it three, four, five hours. Whenever you think they're hitting a low, I can't give you an exact time. It's around, you know, three, four, five, six hours. You know, somewhere in there, just after that uh, 6 p.m. UK on Monday, they hit a low. You buy at that point. Now, you can't really go wrong because even if you don't get them at their lowest point, you're still going to make money, all right? No matter what. Even if you got them on the Monday, you're still going to make money if you got them before 6 p.m. UK. But I'm just saying if you want to make the most money, that's the exact time to get them. Now, you hold them until Friday, Saturday. Okay, if you want to be safe, you hold till Friday. If you want to go risky, Saturday. Okay, Friday safe money. They go out of packs on Friday. If you sell on Friday, um, it's basically no risk. They, they'll rise into the week. Then once they're about to go out of packs on Friday, everyone buys them because it's going into that weekend league. People have money from rewards. We're going into weekend league. People get their guaranteed packs on Thursday and their red rewards on Thursday. And then people would think that makes them go down. It doesn't. Because what happens is people go and pack a Ramos and then they go and buy a Carvajal to link with him, right? So Carvajal goes up. Or they pack a Suarez, they go buy a Griezmann. So it actually makes them and helps them go up in price. All right, so that's kind of how it works. So the best time to buy a few hours after 6 p.m. UK on Monday, the best time to sell if you want to be safe is on Friday. Um, if you want to risk it and make a little bit more money, but you could possibly not lose money, but just not, you know, it, they could go down a little bit and you not make as much money, you can wait till Saturday. So, you know, you've kind of got the extra risk where it could go down a bit, could go higher, up to you. Otherwise, Friday's just safe, safe money. Like I sold on Friday. I bought Carver House for, like I said, what, what did I say? I bought him for 280, no, yeah, 280, wasn't it? No, 260, sorry. Was it two? Wait, I gotta look at him. Was it 260 or 280 I bought him for? What did he get down to? 260, yes, yeah, so we got down to 270. I bought him for 260. On Friday, I sold him for 335. So as you can see, he's gone up to 355 today. But that's a risk. That, that doesn't always happen to every card. Some of them actually go down on Saturday, depending on the next league we get and rival positions. If we get like a really, really good center back and you've invested in a center back and we get and, and we get a center back from a different league that rivals that card, people might drop that card to go get the other one. So um, that's why that's a risk. On Friday, before they come out, it's not a risk at all. So that's what you're gonna be doing. So that's what I would do. Um, it's an easy investment to make and you definitely make a lot of money doing that. I made about what, 260 to 335. I was making like 50K profit a card, 55K profit a card. I only bought a few because right now I'm not really about investing. I'm more about having fun in the game, opening packs. You know, we've got 40 packs in there. We're opening 50 plus packs a day on the live stream. But yeah, that's pretty much the video, man. I'm sorry if that went on for a little bit, guys, because I know it did drag on a little bit, but I hope the information was really helpful. I hope you make a lot of money. If you have any questions, drop into my live uh, Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash two mums. If the video helped you out, um, smash a like, subscribe to the channel, man. And yeah, appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.